we've been looking at bi uh, hermeneutics, right? Mm -hmm. Bible interpretation. So today we're going to look at Bible study tools. Um, these are tools that, you know, you know, stuff that concordances, lexicons, dictionaries, you know, word searches, cross references, uh, all that sort of stuff, and how to use how to use them, how they're useful. Looking at you know where you can find parts of speech, and it can help you study the Bible. Um, there's hard copies of this stuff for people who are less tech savvy. Like this is a concordance, all right? So what it does is you're gonna just you're gonna see a list, you're gonna see a word in English, and it's gonna list everywhere the Bible is uh, translates something to that word. Then you're gonna get like it gives you like half a sentence in there of how of like the kind of verse it's used in. So, so um, so usually these, a concordance is usually going to find just those Greek and Hebrew words. I mean, it's not necessarily going to tell you the word, but it's going to show you where it's used in scripture. So you can assume that it's usually the same Greek or Hebrew word. Um, some of these are also though, just the English translation. So every, every word that's translated to that English word. So some, there's different kinds, usually electronic ones will give you the Greek and Hebrew. And these are useful for like, Let's say I want to study the word uh, save, okay, or salvation. It'll give you everywhere that it, it's translated to that word. So, uh, you know, if, if I want to, like, really get a sense of it, I can just open my Bible up, have this next to my Bible, open up my Bible to all the passages that have the word save or salvation, and look them up and read them. And it gives you an, it's an awesome way to study uh, a, a term or a word or a concept even, you know. Like, let's say you want to say chosen. You find all the passages that give you chosen. And you can really get a good, strong sense of the word chosen and how it's used in the Bible. All right? Um, so really awesome tool. Um, let's see. This is Halley's Bible Handbook. It's just basic concepts. You know, I'm sure there's probably some maps in here. There's dates, timelines. There's pictures. Um, you know, things that... Stuff like that. So it gives you d different books. You know, it goes through it goes through the books in order, and just all sorts of resources in there. Um, this is a dictionary, just a Bible dictionary. So you're going to get the uh, Greek or Hebrew word, followed by the English translation, followed by a definition of it. All right. Um, and I'm going to end up showing you these on the computer, so we can all look at it together. But I'm showing you that there's hard copies. This is a Bible commentary. All right. Just basic commentary. It's you know verse by verse and what they mean and interpretations and information about the verse. By this one is um, by Charles Pfeiffer and Everett Harrison. So you know the author matters too because I mean if you're going to read a Catholic commentary, it's going to be a little different than a Protestant commentary. And you're going to get a Baptist commentary. It's going to be a little different than a Pentecostal commentary, right? Um, this is another concordance. Um, just this one's exhaustive. It's a full concordance. So these things exist in hard copies. Um, you know, for people that are less tech savvy. Personally, I prefer the electronic versions. Um, yeah, the electronic's just a little faster. It's not flipping. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to each his own. I mean, like, I, I definitely understand the it's more real than your eyes, like it's in your eyeballs on paper on the on that. But like for speed, I find that, you know, not having to flip and search is a lot faster on the computer. So, I mean, yeah, either way, I mean, I use my phone. I mean, I write all my, my teachings and stuff on, on my phone, on my phone, because I got an app, I got like a $300 app that, and it's, it's on here. I'll show it to you. It doesn't work good on my old MacBook, but it's, it's called Logos. And like, if you're going to teach, it's a, it's a, it's a, a very useful tool. Um, it doesn't work well on this old MacBook. I don't know why. But uh, it's just not compatible with the old Mac system, I guess. But uh, it works great on my phone. It's awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, these help us just get a better sense of the Bible and Bible words. Um, so let's start in blueletterbible.org. Um, this used to be my – this is the thing I used before I got the Logos app. And uh, I, really, I really like it. Um, so let's just go to John 316 website. So you can – Get different types of Bibles here. You can, you know, use the New King James, the, you know, you know your, uh, your WEV, your, your NIV is probably in here somewhere. So I'm going to put in John 3, 16, and it's going to take us there. Um, 
So this is the book. This is John. All right, here's the verse. Can you guys see my mouse there? And then this is the, uh, these are the words, okay? It's verse by verse. So here's verse 16 in the blue highlight. The one I typed in, it's, it's highlighted blue. And I'm just going to click on it. And then it pops open for me. So here, again, here's the, it, it, there's the verse. And then there's, this is the tools right here. So we're in the first tab here called interlinear. So this is our interlinear, uh, this is, I don't know really, it's, I guess it's kind of a lexicon type thing. But basically what you got is you've got the English here. And then in this row, you've got the Strong's number. Strong numbered all the words. So all these Greek words here are have a number associated in the Strong's. So this is the Greek characters here. The first one is going to be the way the, the part of speech it's in Greek. The second one's going to be the root word. And the third one's going to be what in the English characters. So this is Greek characters. You can tell that's not an English alphabet. This is the same stuff in the English, right? So G-A-R, right? And then it actually, um, this will actually say the word for you out loud. And, and the parsing will be your parts of speech. That's a conjunction. Um, that's an adjective. I don't know what that means. So I'm going to go into uh, saved. Um, first, God so loved the word, world that he gave his only begotten gun, son, <laughs> that... Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have eternal life. Actually, I mean life. I'm going to go into life here. In order to get to the word study on life, all right, and this is it in Greek, Zoe, um, I'm going to just click the 222, 2222 there. And that'll take me to Zoe. Here it is in English. Um, part of speech, so English, Greek, English. There's your number, 2222 in the Strong's. Um, the root word, it's a feminine noun. Okay, so feminine doesn't mean it's a girl. It means it's kind of like in Spanish where you get feminine and masculine words. What they do is like, the, like that's a noun, right? But if you get like an adjective or, or like, like a pronoun attached to it, it'll actually, the pronoun will be either masculine or feminine based on the type, the gender of the noun it's attached to. So it actually, it allows you to connect um, adjectives from a different part of the sentence to that. And in Greek, they really change the order of the sentence a lot. In, like in English, you can do, um, it's, it's subject object. It's like, uh, the dog ran. Okay. But in Greek, they could say ran the dog did kind of thing. Right. Um, because they'll just put the emphasis at the beginning of the sentence. Whereas us for in English, it's always going to be um, the subject first, then the object of the sentence. So the dog first, then the dog ran. Um, but they, they'll Yoda it, you know, ran the dog did, <laughs> right? Yoda, you know how Yoda talks? He'll, he'll flip the, the subject object. And, and in Greek, they'll, they'll do the Yoda talk. So next is Greek inflections. An inflection would be uh, the different way the word's used, like the different um, endings that are on it. So the endings will be like, you know, if you're going from past, present, future, or if you're going from he, she, they, the ending will change to attach to it. So, like, it's just like, that's zoe, zoe, zoe. And then it's got different little inflections on the end. It's just not that important. But then you got zoao and zoes. Um, again, just different way it's used. It tells you how many times they're used that way. Not it's That's a little more advanced. Um, but... The, the stuff that you'd really use on this, so like I'll use part of speech that I look at when I come here. Then I usually just skip right down to the outline of biblical usage. And then it gives you that. It's kind of a nice definition. Um, you know, a state of one who possesses vitality or is animate, every living soul, life, um, the fullness of life, the, you know, the asset both essential and ethical, which belongs to God through him, the hypostatic logos, and the Christ in whom the logos put on human nature. So it's given the idea of like, all right, it's not just life or death, being alive or being dead, but there's also this vitality, this abundance of life that God brings to people. So you get that, that flavor of the word when you, when you read the biblical usage. Strong's definition. So there's the Greek... There's the pronunciation, de zoe, so it's zoe, okay? And then there's the number, and then life, literally or figuratively, all right? So there's figurative use of the life, obviously. Um, 
and then that you got this hyphen and it's going to go to an actual definition life and then in parentheses lifetime so it could mean lifetime also um, then it gives you a comparison word that's probably going to be the antonym or opposite of it to compare it and contrast it against or it might be a similar word it's just something to compare to and you got there's Greek lexicon a lexicon is a lot like a dictionary um, but the one thing I really like about using these things electronically is these hyperlinks so it's going to give you kind of a basic um, dictionary definition of it, right? Then it's going to say, oh, it's just, it's used as vitality or animate in 1 Peter 3.10. Then you just look at, I just scroll right over it, and there's the verse right there. And that's really the use of the, the good part about these apps and electronic is like, you can look at a lot of information really fast. And so, you know, and then it goes on oh, in Hebrews, how it's used, and Acts, how it's used. And so that's just really easy to use. Um, then there's a word search here. We're going to skip that. Concordance. I love using a concordance. Um, I recently did a study on uh, God hardening hearts, and you know, I had to find. I needed what I needed to do, and you'll see this. I'm going to be back in two weeks. You'll see actually the slide I made out of it. Um, but God hardening a heart, uh, Pharaoh's heart. Then I wanted to find all the passages where God hardened Pharaoh's heart, and I, so I just looked in the concordance, and I found all the passages. Um, the one challenge was it, it's a different part of speech. There's two different parts of speech it's used, so I had to find both of them. And and, and uh, so the first thing I did is I went on Google and I just googled God hardening Pharaoh's heart. I found a verse. I looked up the verse and then I went to the concordance, and then I found all the verses with hardened in it. But, uh, but yeah, so you get every verse where the word comes up. So you're getting the Greek two 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 zoe, um, and it gives you the number there. But it's life, and then so it's attaching the number to life there. So because Straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. All right, and then you get every verse, and you can just go through it. And it's got the books in order, so you know you got it goes through Matthew, then Luke, then John, and it goes all the way to the end. And then it keeps going. So if I were to click two, and then it's going through Acts through Peter, then John through Revelation. Um, so then, if I click Bibles here, this is what we just saw, the different Bible translations on the same verse. And if I click cross-references. So, like, you ever read a Bible, and you see on, like, the very inside of the page, you get, like, a bunch of cross-references? Yeah. This is basically that. So it's going to give you, um, this being John 3.16, you're going to get similar uh, ideas from John 3.16, right? Um, very useful. Especially... Where I really use the cross references is if, like, let's say Jesus is quoting Isaiah, and I'm like, all right, I want to go read the passage he's quoting. That way I know what the heck he's talking about, right? Because, like, when Jesus is preaching and he quotes Isaiah, he's taking it, like, out of context, you know? Like, not that he's using it improperly. I'm just saying he's giving you a short snippet of that verse. If I want to read that whole chapter, and that way I know what Jesus was talking about when he referenced it, I'll use that little cross reference, and, and you'll find it here. And then you go back to Isaiah, and then you read the whole chapter of Isaiah, and then you're like, all right, now I know what Jesus was talking about when he used that reference. Okay, And this is especially useful if you're going to read Revelation. Because Revelation is highly symbolic. You know, like all, all these different beasts and stuff, um, and what the beasts mean. A lot of those beasts, the timelines, cross-reference back to Daniel, like the amount of days that the beast conquered the people, it all goes back to Daniel 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, all, especially seven and eight, are the beasts. And it's the same beasts. The beasts that John saw were seven heads and ten horns, two horns. They, they, all like, they were all the same thing as in Daniel. And you get commentaries. It's, again, same thing like we just saw. It's just different commentators in their notes. So, like, for example, I don't know who Chuck Smith is, but you got Chuck Smith's outline of his sermon for John 3.16. I think that's the guy that uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, but I, I, I want to. And you've got dictionaries. Um, for example, like you got Easton's Bible Dictionary on, on uh, Easton Bible's Dictionary on Faith. So now we've got Easton Bible Dictionary on Faith and a dictionary definition of faith. With And then, the, again, the nice thing about electronic is you can just pop open the references that they're referencing and see it right there in front of your eyes. Um, and so it's just a quick way to get resources there. Next I want to show you Bible Hub, which is very similar. 
Um, so this is BibleHub.com, all right? Um, I used to use this mainly for the uh, parallel here. So let's, I'm going to put in John 1, 4. Um, so you get all the different Bibles translating John 1, 4. Um, so like NIV says, In him was life, and that was the light of all mankind. Um, then you got, you know, New American Standard is good. The, the NLT is usually a little more uh, basic English. So it says, the word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought life to everyone. All right, so basically, all those tools that are there that are in Blue Letter Bible are also in here. So you've got sermons connected here. So you're going to have sermons on John. All right, so these are like, uh, this is the preacher or theologian or whatever. And it's going to have, you can just click on his sermons and get to them. So you, there's a lot of information there. There's audio, visual stuff, commentaries. Um, so like you've got Myers commentary, Ellicott's commentary. So you got commentaries on John there. And And then you've got interlinear. So this is going to be what we just saw at Blue Letter Bible. So, the, But this is a different uh, layout. You can see it's, it's instead of going up and down, it's going across. Where you've got the number here, the Greek, English characters, the Greek, Greek characters, then the English words, then the parts of speech there. Okay. Um, then you've got Greek, lexicon. This is going to look similar. I'm going to go back to the main screen on Bible Hub. They have a really awesome, uh, where is it? All right, they've got a good library and they've got a good timeline that I'd like to show you guys. So their library, early church fathers. Um, Ignatius, some of the earliest church writings right here. Ignatius, Polycarp. Um, these guys are from like, you know, these writings are from like 90 AD. You got Christian writings from like 90 AD. Very cool, right? Justin Martyr was pretty significant, 2nd century. And then it goes through uh, uh, Clementine literature, apocryphal liter apocrypha. So like, um, yeah, the books that weren't written by the apostles or weren't written by prophets, but it's, you know, Jewish writing. And some of these are even referenced in the Bible. Apologetics, biblical studies. So yeah, that's their library. The other thing they have is when you're on the main screen down here is the timeline. And this is the timeline here. They have an excellent timeline. Um, so before uh, before dated time, and then you start with dated time with Abraham. Um, and the, so now your Abraham is, you know, your 2000 BC. And it goes all the way up through the BC. It's giving you... You know, references to the Bible, reference, and just a basic description of what happened. So now we're in David's time, around 1000 BC. And you keep going forward, you know, Daniel will probably be around here somewhere. Daniel in 539 BC. And then the end, the intertestamental period and the, at 430 BC with Malachi. And then you've got 6 BC, John the Baptist. Uh, the birth of Jesus around 5 BC. Um, some people say four or anywhere to zero, but you know, around that. And these are these are rough. You know, there's there's no they don't these aren't definite dates. There there's you know where the birth of Jesus probably give or take a few years. Um, but you know, for this stuff back here, like Abraham's time, give or take maybe hundreds of years, right? I mean, the further back you go, the less accurate our dating probably is. Um, and so then it get, takes you all the way through the New Testament. And, you know, all the way up to the book of Revelation, the last one being written. Um, this is my Logos app. Like I said, it doesn't work well on the Mac, on this old Mac system. Um, it's a bit glitchy. But basically, I can open up multiple Bibles. Um, I have John 3.16 again. And what all I have to do is, like, right-click. And then I can open up my, my study tools. And like, this is the usage of life. So like, it means life. Sometimes once or twice it's made eternal, alive, living thing. 
you know, kind of different parts of speech and different type, how the words kind of fuse with some other words to make different meanings, um, just more tools. And then in here I have like my encyclopedia, my dictionary, my topical Bible, my Easton's Bible dictionary, um, all that stuff. Um, it's all on that. And, and on the app, this is a really great program. It's an expensive program, but the app is just very streamlined and easy to use. So I like it. 